Welcome to CCN Midday News. I am your host, Kathy Redding Krishna. Here are some of your top stories for today, March 30th. Donald Trump got caught in the act. Also, Trump falsely denies saying two things that he just said last week. New research shows that the COVID-19 is even more deadlier for people with this condition. And Rhode Island National Guard goes door to door to find New Yorkers fleeing from the COVID-19 hotspots. The Solid Rock Church continues public worship services during the COVID-19 outbreak. And a Maryland man arrested for having 60 people over for a bonfire violating social distancing orders. Let's get to the news. As the coronavirus continues to get worse and take more attention, Congresswoman Bonnie Watson Coleman has caught Donald Trump's Department of Labor trying to simply get rid of affirmative action in midst of the coronavirus crisis. Today, I've learned that the Department of Labor is suspending its affirmative action guidelines. For decades, we have fought to ensure that minorities and women owned businesses and were given the opportunities to work on the federal, state, and local projects. Now, with a stroke of a pen, the United States Department of Labor otherwise known as the USDOL, has decided that one way to overcome this crisis is to suspend the fairness rules on those projects. This is a further expression of racism, evident by the Trump administration. On the day the Senate passed the largest economic stimulus package in American history, the administration has decided now is the time to cut out women and minority-owned businesses. The good news is that when it comes to stopping these kind of corrupt moves, knowing is half the battle. Because of Bonnie Watson's Coleman's has caught Trump in the act of this, and because she sound the alarm, there's a chance we'll be able to pressure the Department of Labor into picking its battle and reversing this move. On two occasions during Sunday's coronavirus briefing, President Donald Trump falsely denied that he had said words that he had said publicly just last week when PBS's Yamish Alcindor uh, noted that the president had said that he did not believe that governors actually needed all the equipment they claimed that they did, Trump said he did not say that, even when he said it precisely on Fox News on Thursday. Later, when the CNN White House correspondent Jeremy Diamond noted that Trump had said that he wanted governors to be appreciative of him and that if they did not treat him right, I don't call, Trump said. But I didn't say that, Trump added, even though he said precisely that on the Friday briefing. Trump falsely denied that he claimed the governors from certain states are asking for equipment they don't need. At Sunday's briefing, PBS our White House correspondent Yamish Alcinda asked the president whether he felt that his comments and beliefs that some of the equipment that the governors are requesting they don't actually need would have an impact on the federal distribution of ventilators and other medical resources. As Yamisha Sender attempted to finish her question, the president interjected, saying, I did not say that, before going on to say that he wouldn't have, it wouldn't have an impact. The study, which was conducted from January to February, looking at a group of 416 COVID-19 patients hospitalized in Wuhan, China, and found that 19.7 suffered a cardiac injury, which put them at a higher risk for the fatal version of the coronavirus. Cardiac injury, also known as myocardial injury, happens when the heart muscle is damaged, which is usually a result of the reduction of blood flow and then a heart attack occurs. The researchers found that 82 of the patients, otherwise the 19.7%, had cardiac injuries, and the 334 patients, which is 80.3%, did not. They found that the death rate was higher among the patients with the cardiac injury, with 51.2% dying 
which is 42 patients versus the 4.5%. Dr. Eden Marcos, the Associate Director of Preventative Cardiology at the John Hopkins Medicine in Baltimore, Maryland, told CNN, we know that cardiac damage is a marker for more mortalities. The studies clearly show that even after you account for age and pre-existing cardiovascular disease, there was a still fourfold increase risk of dying. And that's really important. Approximately 30% and 60% of patients with cardiac injuries in the present study had a history of coronary heart disease and hypertension, respectively. The Rhode Island National Guard started going door to door on Saturday in the coastal areas to inform any New Yorkers who may have come to the state that they must self-quarantine for 14 days. Governor Gina Romano explained the mandatory self-quarantine to anyone visiting the state. Romano also ordered residents to stay at home with exceptions for getting food, medicine, and going to the doctor and ordered non-essential retail businesses to close Monday uh, until April 13th to help stop the spread of the coronavirus. She also directed retailers and hotel operators to include new requirements that any out-of-state residents must quarantine for 14 days in their purchase agreement. The state police set up checkpoints on the I-95 in Hope Valley on Friday where drivers with the New York license plate must stop and provide contact information and where they were going to self-quarantine for two weeks. The parking lot of the church North Campus in Monroe appeared to be half full for its Sunday morning service. The church's message board along the Interstate 75 north of the Ohio 63 interchange invited motorists to join the congregation for its 1030 a.m. services. On March 23rd, Jennifer Baylor, the Butler County Health Commissioner, sent a letter to the church noting that they had received numerous complaints from the surrounding community about the continuation of large services on Sundays and Wednesdays. Baylor noted that while the health department understands the church is exempt from the mass gathering and stay at home direct orders issued by the Ohio Department of Health, the Butler County public health officials highly encouraged the Solid Rock Church to discontinue holding large mass gatherings and practice social distancing, keeping a distance of at least six feet between people. Bringing together a large number of people during a pandemic increases the pace at which the virus is spread overwhelming our hospital systems and posing a significant risk to members within the congregation. Baylor's letter also said a majority of religious institutions in Ohio have taken a strong stance of eliminating a interperson services while continuing to meet their congregation's spiritual fulfillment through digital sermons. Many churches in Ohio have heeded to the stay at home and other public health orders to prevent the communal spread of the COVID-19 through mass gatherings such as worship services. Sean Marshall Myers, age 41, was arrested on Friday night after officers found about 60 people hanging out around a bonfire at his home. The Charles County Sheriff's Office said that that was the second time he had hosted a large gathering since Governor Larry Hogan's emergency order had banned gatherings of more than 10 people went into effect. Deputies responded to his house on March 22nd after receiving another complaint about a party there. 
Myers had agreed to disperse the crowd on March 22nd, but deputies say he refused to do so when they responded to the party on Friday after authorities consulted with the state's attorney's general's office myers was charged with violating hogan's order the sheriff's office urged the public to comply with the order for the safety health and well-being of all the communities as of saturday night there were 21 cases of the coronavirus in charles county and maryland cases have surpassed 1,000. Once again, thank you for watching CCN Midday News. Hope you enjoyed. Please like, share, and subscribe. Also hit that notification button so you will never miss another news update. Have a great day. Peace.